Okay. Let us go to the word of the Lord. As printed in your bulletin, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 11th verse, and we'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, as each part does its own special works, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just for a few moments, we want to speak to you from this subject, Equipped. And this epistle, this epistle is about the necessity of the church and that the church be made mature and united. This epistle was written somewhere between 50 and 80 CE to Gentile believers. There is debate whether or not Paul actually wrote this or if this was written later by one of Paul's disciples. Either way, the, the focus is on its meaning and its purpose, and its purpose is to unite and mature and grow the church. Jesus established the church and its ministry, the writer is saying, that the church and the ministry is not something that was made up by humans, but yet established by God himself. Amen. Amen. And in the church, there are four, four gifts of ministry to the church of God. Yeah. One first being apostles who are led by Christ and leading the church. They have authority to convey doctrine and establish other churches, appointing and ordaining clergy and leadership. In many ways, they are comparable to being a bishop. And second, you have prophets, God's mouthpiece to the church. Sometimes a predictive word telling you of what is to come, but other times a word of encouragement, rebuke, or correction. Not over, not glorified psychics giving you a word of prosperity and a word of wealth, but oftentimes a word of correction, admonishment, and rebuke telling the church what it needs to do to be the church. Prophets weren't often popular. Most folk didn't like it or were upset if they knew the prophet was coming to bring a word to the church because they knew that they were about to have their toes stepped on. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in this place? And then, thirdly, you have evangelists who are called and gifted 
to preach the good news everywhere. Amen. Preach it in churches, preach it in the marketplaces, preach it on street corners, preach it where people are so that people who don't know the Lord can hear the good news of Jesus the Christ. Uh, evangelists aren't so much about preaching to church folk. That's really not their job. It is the job of the evangelist to share the good news to unbelievers. Not the evangelist's job to hold revivals for church people, but to go out and set up places to preach so that the lost can be saved at any cost. Amen. Amen. And then, fourthly, you have pastor teachers, which really is one gift. If you look at the Greek, it's really pastor teacher. Uh, so it's really not a five-fold ministry, but it's four. Because the pastor assumes the role as the chief teacher of the church. Amen. Amen. It is the pastor teacher's job to oversee the local church and teach the body of Christ God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of these things, all of these gifts to the church are to equip in other words, to mend together the saints in unity as one body so that the saints know what their purpose is in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So that the saints will speak the same thing. If anybody walks up to anybody in the church and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? They ought to get the same answer from every saint in the church. Amen. If some unbeliever asks the question, who is Jesus? They ought to get the same answer from every member in the church. If somebody asks you, uh, asks a, a believer, who is the Holy Spirit? We ought to get the same answer from every believer. If somebody asks you, uh, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? They ought to get the same answer from every believer. Yes. Amen. Amen. If someone were to ask a member of the church, uh, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? They should all receive the same answer from every member. But in order for that to happen, every member of the body of Christ has to be properly equipped to share God's word. Properly equipped to do the ministry of the gospel and the ministry of God's will. Others folks speak the same thing. Mm -hmm. So should the church. Because mm -hmm. there's only, as written in this same book of Ephesians, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. Be equipped that we will all be mature saints, not easily moved by slick and perverse teaching. It seems like some people in the church just go by every wind of doctrine, every new teaching that comes along that sounds halfway good. People in the body of Christ are ready to receive it. That shows that they are not well equipped. When you're well equipped, you're not moved by every slick talking preacher and teacher teaching lies. Amen. that sound like the truth. When we are equipped, we're able to discern, to discern the truth from lies. Amen. Amen. And we're not so easily discouraged and set back by challenges because 
the writer of this book is making it clear that when you are mature in the faith, you're able to handle challenges, able to say when I'm weak, I'm strong, and I'm still going to do what God called me to do regardless of what's going on in my life. Don't you know that the enemy will send challenges our way to try to stop us? Yeah. We need to be understanding that these are attacks and govern ourselves accordingly. But we can only do that when we're equipped. Amen. 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 We will be standing on God's word unwaveringly in love and be more like Jesus. Amen. At the end of the day, that's what we're called to be, more like Christ. All knowing his and her ministry and flowing as such. When the saints are equipped, they know what God has called them to do. There's no confusion. It's a good thing when we know what God has called us to do. But that's why all saints need to be in the church to be effectively equipped. That's right. Amen. Amen. Some of us actually think the church is an option for the believer. I think I'll say that again. Some people actually think that regularly attending worship and Bible study and church school is an option for the believer. Honey, turn to somebody and tell them it's mandatory. it's mandatory. In order for you to be equipped, do you think God set up, set up the church just because God had nothing else better to do? Some of us act that way. Some of us act like God set up the church because God had nothing else better to do but set up the church. A place that we can come to when we feel like it. Show up when we feel like it. But somehow still pleasing to God. But honey, that's just not so. Jesus set this up himself. So saying, so saying no to attending church is saying no to Christ. And if you say no to Christ, you're saying no to God. The one who puts breath in our bodies every day. Hello in here. Job doesn't put breath in your body. Money doesn't put breath in your body. Family doesn't put breath in our body. But many of us who call ourselves believers put money, job, family, and other things ahead of our work in the church when God is making it clear that that ought to be our priority. Why? So that we can be equipped. The text says we're supposed to all say the same thing, but could you imagine how many different answers would happen if somebody off the street asked every one of us what they must do to be saved? Amen. Some of us wouldn't even be able to give an answer according to Scripture. Well equipped saints would know what Scriptures to turn to. Like that. Why? Because they would have taken the time to study and know it. Knowing that making disciples is an important part of not just their ministry, but their lives. Amen. Amen. If something's important to you, you're going to master it. Can I get some help in here? Amen. Amen. But how many in here are masters of the word of God? Masters of the gospel? Mm, it's quiet now. But if we really cared about Jesus, we would be. We take the time. Amen. I don't care how busy our schedules are. We would make time for the ministry. Amen. Make time for it. Put stuff aside so that we can do it. Amen. We can't win this fight ill-equipped. It's like trying to win a war with no weapons. Amen. Mm. Amen. You will literally and figuratively get your head handed to you. Amen. But that's how many of us are. 
And we try to go out and make disciples. And that's why some of us don't bring anybody to church because we don't even know what to say. You ain't, we're not getting anybody to come to church. Just tell them, come join my church. You got to give them some word. But if we're not equipped, we don't know what to say. We invite somebody to church and they ask them, well, why should I go to church? We also all, we ought to all give them the same answer. Because the church is the body of Christ and the church is, with, is the place where the gospel is preached. And the church is the place where God wants all his children to be. Well, what must I do to be saved? How many here right now would be comfortable answering that question? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or stand up. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. But this is something that we ought to give ourselves self-inventory for. And if we can't answer the question, something is wrong. Amen. Amen. It is the responsibility of every believer, every member of the body of Christ, to know the gospel and be able to share it coherently and accurately and scripturally. Amen. But if we would examine ourselves, how many of us could actually do it? Amen. Amen. God has called us to be equipped. Amen. Equipped to be able to pray for anybody and pray for anything at any time. It's a shame before God if I were to call somebody to lead us in prayer. Oh, Pastor, I don't know how to pray in public. I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But you've been in the church for years. And the, we have people that have been in the church for years and still ill-equipped. Ill-equipped. If I'm making some folk feel bad, good. Because if we're still ill-equipped after all these years, we ought to feel bad. That's like me going through 12 years of school and can't read. Can't do a simple addition. What would you think if somebody showed you their high school diploma or a college degree and you asked them what's four plus four and they told you they don't know? Would you think something's wrong? Yes. Well, someone's been in the church 10, 15, 20 years, and you ask them what must I do to be saved, and you can't give an answer? That's even worse. You can't say amen, say oh me. This is what God's called. And please, oh, Pastor Book is telling us we have to do the word of God is telling me you gotta Amen. do all of this. Amen. I ain't teaching nothing but the word. But that's why some saints are so weak. Because they're not equipped to handle ministry or even life. Amen. Amen. How many know life can kick your behind if you're yes. not equipped? Yes. Life, the devil can use life to mess us up and get us off track and cause us to lose focus, cause us to be depressed, cause us to be down, cause us to, to doubt our own salvation, cause us to not want to do ministry. And if we're not equipped, we don't know that even in the point of weakness, we're supposed to declare, I am strong. Yes. But if we don't know that, if we're not equipped, we might think we're supposed to stay weak. We might actually feel we are defeated. We might actually feel that there is no hope if we're not well equipped. We quote it all the time and get happy of it, about it, but many of us don't live the text, they that wait upon or hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. Yes. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. Run and not get weary and walk and not faint. Don't live that. 
And if you're soaring like eagles, why are you still hanging around buzzards and pigeons? Amen. 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 That's why the Bible says, and well equipped saints know this, for us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yes. You are who you keep company with. Now, I ain't talking about being a witness to some buzzards and pigeons and telling them how they could be eagles. What I'm talking about is being an eagle and hanging with buzzards and pigeons and acting like a buzzard and a pigeon. Amen. Amen. Am I clear? Yes. Very clear. Jesus hung with harlots and prostitutes and tax collectors and drunkards. Yeah, but he didn't act like them and live like right. them. That's right. That's right. He didn't even really hang with them. He witnessed to them and showed them the love of God. Those that received it followed him. Those that didn't, he left them behind. Uh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. No Texas said he was in the bar every day drinking and getting drunk with folk. He taught them, he witnessed to them, and then he kept it moving. That's how we need to be with some of our old friends. Witness to them. Tell them about Jesus. Now come go to church with me. Nah, but why don't you come to the party with me? Sorry, I don't live that life anymore. Amen. But to take stands like that, you have to have the strength of somebody who is equipped. Can't stand against challenges. Because a lot of us who are ill-equipped are ignorant of who we are. Amen. We don't understand that we are children of God and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We don't understand that greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. So we cower and we take down and we compromise. And at the end of the day, we can't share a gospel we don't know ourselves. Amen. 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 Why is it that if you ask any Jehovah's Witness a question, they can give you the same answer? It's wrong that they can give it to you. Amen. Why is it that a Mormon, if you ask them a question about their faith, they can give you the same answer? It's wrong, but they'll give you the same answer. But you ask a Christian something about the gospel, something about the Bible, something about the church, you'll get 150 million different answers and 99% of them wrong. Amen. And if this is hitting anybody hard, whether it be here or on YouTube or on Facebook or anybody that watches this, this isn't for you to feel sorry for yourself and lick your wounds. No, this is to challenge you to become equipped. Hallelujah. It's not too late. If you haven't been equipped all this time, today is the day for you to seek to be equipped. Amen. Amen. The devil in this world, they're equipped, so so do we. That's right. So must we be equipped as well. And how can we become equipped? Well, we can pay attention on Sunday morning when the preacher is teaching. Amen. Instead Amen. of tuning him out when he says stuff we don't like. Amen. Or when she says stuff we don't like. Amen. And that's what some of us do. Oh, this is honesty Sunday. We're going to tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. Amen. Jazz spiritualized. I, I see stuff you don't think I see. And I know when some of us tune me out. That's a pastoral gift. Ain't going to call anybody out. But believe me, trust me, I know when I'm being tuned out. Folks start looking down, looking at their phone, looking at their Bibles, looking at their notes, looking away, rolling their eyes. Honey, you can look away, roll your eyes, but baby, you're responsible for what's been presented in your presence, whether you heard it or not. God holds us accountable for what we're present to, even if we don't hear it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We also have, a, have to have a commitment to come to Bible study and church school to become equipped. Why should God equip somebody that's not committed? Amen. 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 
Okay. It'd be other folk got to come to Bible study and church school to get equipped, but you so special you don't have to, but God going to equip you anyhow? And what do you think are the main things God's going to ask us for when we stand before him? You think it's going to be how many times we wore our uniforms correctly? You think that's going to be high on the list? How many fundraisers we had for the church? You think that's going to be high on the list? How often we wore our hats properly to church? You think that's going to be high on the list? How many church meetings we attended? I'm talking about business meetings, not worship meetings. How many funerals we came to? Because some of us have a much better attendant record for funerals than we do Bible study. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> Jesus said this, not me. He said, let the dead bury the dead. I didn't say it, so get mad at Jesus. Don't get mad at me. He said it. But we want to be equipped saints, but we feel more obliged to come to a homegoing service. And the Bible study, for real, and some say, well, Reverend, you know, we're not going for the person that's deceased. We're going there to support the family that we love, just to let them know we love them. How about supporting Christ in Bible study and, and, and in church school to show him how much you love him? Expect folk to shout much on this. But I'm going to tell you what God's going to require of us when we stand before Him. One of this is how many disciples did you make? Amen. Amen. And He's going to hear no excuses because He's going to know the teaching that you got. And you may not like the teacher, but the teaching has been correct and accurate and sound. Amen. 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 It's sound. 